want to share what God laid upon my heart with all of you. And because Thanksgiving, we have lunch programs for the long. Grace from God's view. Okay. And once you all settle down, we close the doors to keep the noise out. Right. There was once in my life a, a wise child of God, a wise woman of God, rather, more precisely. She told me, Reuben, perception is a guiding factor. Perception has a lot to do with how we perceive things, how we live our life. And grace is something either we can understand from man's point of view or from God's point of view. Right? And if you want to see it from God's point of view, we'll see why you want to see it from God's point of view. But that's part of perception, that view. Right? How we view things is so important, is that true? Not what we view, but how we view it. How we view, right? For example, this is a figure on the ground. The guy on the left says what? Nine. Uh, yeah, this left, your left. Oh, your left, sorry. Yeah, my right. But the guy on this side, left says is six. The guy on the right says is nine. But the same number on the ground. Right? Again, got to do with where you're standing, how you're perceiving. Right? What about this? The guy on the left says four. four. The guy on the right says three. three. But look at the drawing on the there. Again, depends on what you see, where you see it. Same with grace. Why is it important? Because here is something that's very important. Sorry, I'm rushing through all this. Religion is man's view of God. Religion is what man thinks of God is, so God, what God wants, what God is, and who God is. Gospel is God's view of us through Christ. Right? And as we grow in God, as we grow in the Lord, we come out of the first view because a lot of us, we grew with religion. Is that true? How many of you grew with the top part of the religion view? With a lot of do's and don'ts, right? Uh, one of those things, and it's a transition that we're going through, our minds are going through to the, the gospel, the truth of God, which is God's view of man, how God views us through Christ, because of Christ, right? The same thing that can be said about grace, right? And what is another simple word for word, for word grace? <coughs> another simple word for grace? Favor. favor. Simple word is favor. Favor is easily understood that grace, but a simple word is favor, right? Now, before we go to a bunch of verses in the New Testament, let's look at an example in, in Joshua chapter 6. For the sake of time, I'll just read one verse. Joshua 6, 23. Am I going too fast? No? Okay. No one answers, so I don't think it's no. Uh, Joshua 6, 23. Right? Here's a beautiful example in the Old Testament of God's favor and what God did. Okay, let's read this together, shall we? And the young men who had been spies, right? We heard about Jericho this morning. Who had been spies went in and brought up Rahab. Now this is their come to spies. And Joshua, they're coming out against Jericho. And before the Jericho falls down, they are bringing, um, right, defeat the air. Yes, they are bringing in, um, this Rahab. But let's read this. The spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. Now what is amazing about the scripture? Can anyone pick up what's amazing about the scripture? What is amazing about the scripture? Can anyone pick up? No? Okay, who believed in God and acted on that faith? Rahab. It was just Rahab. It was only Rahab. Her brother had nothing to do with it. Her father had nothing to do with it. Her family had nothing to do with it. They were not even not mentioned that they were there. Right? Here is one lady who was a, had a colorful past, horrible lifestyle, she was, she was known as a harlot, prostitute. She acted on that faith and took the spice in, 
while the rest of the people were fearful and trembling and you know not knowing what to do, she believed in God of Israel, right? God of Jacob, and she took in the spies, hid them, and turned them away. Here, these men are showing a favor back to her for what she did. They're returning a favor back to her. Right? She only brought in two spies in, but they're returning this favor, this grace, back to her. And how are they doing it? Everything that concerns her. Is that true? Everything about her. Even all that she had, like the subjects. I have seen pops and pants and all that. Like, they brought up Rahab and her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. They didn't have to. They didn't have to do all this. If they could have just brought out her, that would have been a simple deal. What? Is that true? Because only she was involved in helping the spies out. Only she was involved in putting faith. But this is just young men, two men, showing favor to Rahab. This is a simple picture of God's favor upon us. What does it mean? That God is concerned about every aspect of our life. When God says, my grace is sufficient for you, my, my, my favor is upon you, we'll see in a few minutes, he was in the New Testament. But God wants us to experience favor in every aspect of our life. Is that true? Not just our spiritual life, but in every aspect of our life. If young men did that to Rahab, how much more God? Right? God is, we read, we'll see God of all grace. And I find it so amazing. They didn't have to do it. Young men didn't have to do it. Bring out even the things that she had. But they did, they did everything, put out everything. Right? Now, people say that, you know, we have grace in our lives because of Jesus, but in the Old Testament, God didn't show grace. Is that true? God didn't show grace, but in the, now it's true in the New Testament, we have grace through Christ. Christ brought grace, that's true. We have grace. But let's read a verse in the Old Testament, not too many verses. Let's look at this verse in the Old Testament. Where we see a clear example that God is the same God. God in the Old Testament, the same as God in the New Testament. Genesis 6, 7 to 8. Genesis 6, 7 to 8. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and the beast, creeping thing in the birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. Right? Because they have grown all wicked. But Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. Is God always a God of grace? God is always a God of grace. Is that for us now it's, it's made simple because of Christ. It made easy because of Christ. But God is always a God of grace. Here Noah found it. That means it doesn't say God gave grace to Noah. But did Noah found it. Why did Noah find grace? He says, in the eyes of the Lord, eyes of God. What does it mean, eyes of God? Well, what does it mean, eyes of God? Why does it say hands of God? Why does it say legs of God? Why does it say just from God? Why does it say eyes of God? Sorry? He's watching. Watching? What else? Eyes of God. What does it mean when you look someone into the eyes? Seeing? What else? Who looks eye to eye very often at what time of the life? Someone interested, interested in you? When someone is dating you? Is that true? Yes, no, some of you are laughing. You want to bring your memory back then? <laughs> right? 20 years, 30 years back? It's a saying that the path of the entrance to our soul is through our eyes. When you look at through, uh, through eyes of someone, there's intimacy involved. Is that true? There's intimacy involved. Noah just looked at God, was depending on God. Noah was looking at God and God was looking back at him. 
those intimate connections. And Noah found out, wow, God is a God of grace. So the intimate fellowship with God, Noah found out, this is who God really is. These people don't know. These, all these people around me, they don't know there's a God of grace. But because I'm looking to the eyes of God, and God looking at me, I'm depending on God, I found out that God is a God of grace. God is a God of favor. God wants to favor you. Again, because God favored Noah, what did God do? God spared his family. God spared his substance. See, God went all out and showed the favor of Noah. So, God is always a God of grace. We should, we should, some people think that, you know, they quite a different picture of God and what is in God's New Testament, right? Best way to understand is God is an unchanging God. God is the same God, right? In the New Testament, of course, that we are able to understand God and the Father because of Christ. God sees it through Christ, not through our works. But God is always a God of favor. And, you know, look, look at the time. People are wicked. Read the previous verse. God said, I'm going to destroy them. They have gone away from me. They are so wicked. So they're so wicked that every imagination was so evil in their mindset. They're so bad, God was regretting making the people. But Noah found the grace of God. Noah stood out among all the people because of God's favor. When we experience God's favor in our life, you will stand out of the crowd. When you experience God's favor in your life, you will, people will look at you and realize something different about you. Something different about you. You will stand out of the crowd. I can guarantee you that. You will stand out of your family. You will stand the time. If you are blending with others, you are missing out on the true grace of God. Does it make sense? When you experience the grace of God, you will stand out because God will make you stand out. God will make you stand out. God will make you special. Hallelujah. Right. Recently we heard uh, at the Paris Bible College, we heard, uh, we had heard this before, but heard it again. How when you listen to the Holy Spirit, He makes you look good. <laughs> how many of you remember that? Hearing it at the Paris Bible College? Right? Um, I think Andrew Mike has said it. I think, uh, was it Arthur? Arthur? No. Is it Arthur? One of the kids? Can we hear you, kid? No, Lawson, sorry. Lawson, sorry. Thank you, Lawson. And I was looking at him a few days ago. And uh, I don't have to speak about my study, but I can do a small essay about six, seven pages. And uh, one thing I typed it all up, and I wasn't happy about it. I was happy about the essay, and I you know, like a C, it's B or C, and you know, so we're smart one. And, and uh, so I, I wrote it, but I saw somehow I had no phone to edit it. This wasn't good. So I, 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 I mentioned the Lord about it. Lord, I'm not happy with this essay, Lord. I'm not happy about it. And, um, and if I hand it in, I'll get a C or B, whatever it is. But I'm going to hand it in, but Lord, help me out in this. And so I just told all about it and thought about it. And I'm coming out of one class, and Holy Spirit tells me, wait a minute, go see that person. And gives me a name in my mind. Now, I never ever met this person in my life. Never talked to the person, never emailed the person, never texted. I don't know the person. And Holy Spirit said, go see Okay, So I, instead of going to other class, I turned around, went to the room, and knocked on this building. The Holy Spirit put in my mind, and you know how we hear God all the time, don't we? We just start not really listening. My sheep yes, yes. hear my voice. You know, God speaks to you more than you realize. Sometimes it could be just a thought, but you think it's just your, your thinking. But it's God. He doesn't say, My sheep can hear my voice. He says, My sheep hear my voice, period. My sheep hear my voice. Take us a commandment. As God, I hear your voice. Amen. Amen. Not I'm waiting to hear your voice. I hear your voice. Period. So anyway, this, this word thoughts in and I knew the Holy Spirit because my mind was not someone new I never met. You know, it's like if you know someone, someone comes to your mind understandable. You never met the person. And so so I walked in and I said, you know, I don't want to say and can someone edit my paper? Uh, she said, okay. She said, who are you? I said, I'm Ruben. And I said, who are you? <laughs> you know, I'm going to get the full name. I never met this person. 
Just walk to make the Lord's return. He, he don't do that at that university. They make appointments and proper things, right? You know, just suppose like, okay, okay, I'll help you. I don't have a name, but my colleague next door has a name. Okay, so it took me in. Long story short, uh, I get a name, a, a professional editor, and I had two days left. And Tuesday, I didn't go to school, and so I'm home. Um, maybe sitting in Jeremiah. But uh, anyway, I emailed the person and said, I don't know who you are now. I get an email of someone I don't know about. Never met in my life, but don't know from Adam. I get an email and said, this your email was given to me. I have paper ready to that, but it's due next tomorrow. Can you please edit it? Person spends hours and hours on it, takes the whole things apart, edits it, gives it back A plus paper. Wow. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Listen to the Holy Spirit, it will make you look good. <laughs> so I'm cheating university, but God's helping me. <laughs> I'm cheating, but you get the point. Right? Listen to the Holy Spirit, it will make you look good. Now, Russell thinks, wow, he's a great writer. You know, if he says that, I'll just chuck him inside. No, I'm not a great writer. <laughs> the Holy Spirit just helped me out in this. Right? Now, to me, life is like that. Right? When you're walking in the grace of God, you will stand out in a good way. Remember, entire population of the earth, entire population of the earth, just corrupt, evil, right? In the imagination. But Noah, to the grace of God, he was standing out. Not only standing out, he was able to fulfill. Right? Now, grace of God is so real. Paul said it in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. 1 Corinthians verse 15, he says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Let's stop it for a minute. By the grace of God, you are who you are. That means, Everything you do in life is by the grace of God. Every, you are who you are by the grace of God. If you're able to come here, it's by the grace of God. If you're able to minister to someone, it's by the grace of God. If you're able to help someone else, it's by the grace of God. You are who you are by the grace of God. Right? And the more you believe that God is a God of grace, it increases of who you are as far as manifesting out or it's revealing yourself out. Does that make sense? Right? You are who you are by the grace of God. That means if I'm operating in 20% of the grace of God, because my view of God's grace is 20%, then that's who I am. But if I believe from God's point of view that God's grace is complete, 100% for me, Right? That's who I am. I am who I am by the grace of God. Then I will function in that God's grace in my life. Hallelujah. Let's all, let's all say together. I am who I am. I am who I am. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. That means every, anything you do because God is showing you favor. I am who I am by the favor of God. I am who I am. So you will experience. More of the favor of God in our lives. Because it increases who you are in Christ. In experience. In real life. Right? You are who you are by the grace of God. Now, who is this? What is this grace? And I'm going too far. But 1 Peter 5.10. 1 Peter 5.10 says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you suffered of our perfect, established strength in the cell of you. But the God of all grace. So, from God's point of view, as far as grace is concerned, how does God see you? God sees you as, you have my complete favor. Wow. You have my complete favor for your spiritual life, for your physical life, for your family life, for your work life, for your hobby life. You're my complete favor. I'm God of all grace. Right? If I'm struggling with something, we think of, maybe I'm not facing this. I've never thought like that. In particular, if you're struggling, if you're not really coming through it, maybe like, let's take common struggle people have. Maybe no one 
money methods, financial methods. They're struggling with this, like, maybe, I don't know, something is wrong. Nothing is wrong. You have grace in that life as well. Maybe physically you're struggling some sickness. Maybe, I don't know. No. Say, my body, you have grace. Body, you live by the grace of God. My God is a God of all grace. Hallelujah. And we got to believe it. And when, when we experience God's fear in our body, it's healing. It's a truth. It's healing. God is a God of all grace. So when God's view of grace is 100% complete, complete. That means God wants us to experience His fullness of grace. His fullness. In so much so, you know, this verse in 1 Peter, let's read again. This verse says, May the God of all grace, right? What is the result of all grace? Who has called us eternal glory, yes, part of the calling. After he suffered, or whatever, he went to some trial because they were going to persecution. It says, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. You become unshakable. You become unmovable. When we experience the grace of God, no matter what we go through, mature, establish, strengthen or to be strong, and settle. It's a life of grace. All grace. Right? And let's read another verse. Paul says it beautifully in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9 8. He says, God is able to make, God is able to make, you know, there are a few words in the Bible that we have a hard time believing. You know what those words are? There are a few words in the Bible that we have a hard time accepting. You know what they are? All. All. Everything. Whatsoever. Right? Those are words like, too good to be true. No. That's who God is. Now, this does not even say God has only given us grace. That's true. There are verses that we see. God has only given us grace. This is not about position. This is about experience. It says, God is able, is, present tense, is able, is mighty, is willing to make all grace abound toward you. You know what abound is? If something is abounding towards you, what does it mean? Coming in fullness, overflowing. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you, that you, that you, okay, I'm talking to you, God says, that you, just like Noah, that you, always, is another word people find it difficult to believe. <laughs> always. So Christianity is not about up and down. It's not about your, your life. It's not one day misery, next day heaven. Not one day hell, next day heaven. No. Always. Let's believe the word of God. Always means always. Does anyone believe in me? <laughs> Do you believe can you shout hallelujah for the word always? Hallelujah. hallelujah. That you always. Hallelujah. There's a lie out there. There's a lie out there. No, don't say you're always happy in the Lord. That's, that's, that's a lie. Don't say that you're always joyful in God. It's a lie. I don't believe that lie. What did God say so? That you always, even when your spouse is nagging and pressing all the red buttons. <laughs> right? Even in the workplace, people are giving you trouble. Or school is not going well. That you always having all sufficiency in all Wow. Can, can God be more clear than that? <laughs> always having all sufficiency in all things may have abundance for every good work. Wow. What a verse. What a promise. This is the mind of God, how God wants us to live every day. Every minute. And if, how is that possible? Grace. 
Shall we read again? Is that a fun good verse? Yeah. You forget everything you heard today, at least one of this verse. Let's read again, shall we? Yeah. And God is able to make all grace, not just to be given, but abound toward you. Again, this first part of the verse is not something is done. Yes, it is done. You see, scripture that gives all you good. But this is about talking about experience. Experience. Right? About real life. God is able to make all grace abound towards. So God is not waiting to give you grace. Because this is the mind of God. God wants us to experience His all grace. God is, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That is a result of that. How do we know that you're walking in all grace? You lack nothing. In, a, in real life. You lack nothing. Wow. God is able to make all this abound toward you. As a result of that, therefore, that you, you, I'm speaking to you, you, always having all sufficiency in all things. Wow. Always all, all. <laughs> you always having, say, having. It's not had. Is having, doesn't it? Always having all sufficiency in all things may have abundance, may have abundance, abundance, abundance. Life is a life of abundance. Every aspect. Abundance. Let's see abundance, shall we? Abundance. Abundance. Let's all shout it out. Abundance. 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 It's biblical word, God's word. Amen. Not Ruben's word. Abundance. Health. Spiritual abundance. That abundance is peace, joy, strength, gladness in abundance. Physical strength and mental strength. Emotional strength. Financial strength. Family strength. This is the God of grace. Isn't that God awesome? Yeah. Isn't that Father so awesome? Yeah. I think it's just super awesome, God. Right? That you have abundance for every good work. Now, good work, it can be anything. You name it, you do it. Every good work. This is true again. When you understand grace from God's view, God's angle, not from our angle, which is very limited, right? From God's angle, right? Let's read again Peter, right? Again, we know this verse, but this is what God has done for us, and God wants to experience this. As His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What do we again? Given unto us. See, these are hidden gem words. Hidden gems in the verses. Has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that you need for your life, our human life on this earth, and for spiritual life. So that first life can be the natural life. Right? This can be the natural life. Our regular just human life. We have a natural life, don't we? We do work. We do whatever things we do. Pertain to life, what we do, and God in a spiritual life. Right? Through the knowledge of Him, because we know because of Christ, because we know Him, God has given us all things. Right? And so, and again in 1 Corinthians 1 4, it says, I thank my God always concerning for you the grace of God which was given to you by Christ. The grace of God is only given to us. Amen. You have the grace of God, complete, complete grace of God. And God is not done with just having given us a grace through Christ. God wants us to experience this. If you have to memorize the scripture, please memorize this. Beautiful verse. And say it again and again. So you're, you're, you're informing, as you heard, you're informing your mind, informing your heart. A beautiful, beautiful verse to memorize. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. 
that you having always all things may abound every good work. Can you imagine going through life like this? That's awesome. That's the God of grace, God of favor, which God has given us through Christ Jesus. You'll never just have a pity cry or, or a needy cry or a longing cry. No, you have to put your head up and say, my God is a God of all grace. And you will, like Noah, you will stand out of the crowd. In your family, you will stand out of the crowd. You will say, he's walking in grace. Amen. Like, religion speaks about grace, but it's a religious view of grace. God's grace is amazing. It's amazing that you walk in full favor, and that favor will spread out to the parts around you. Others will feel that you're walking in God's favor. Others will feel it. Others will feel it, walking in favor. Right? Others will sense it. Something unique. Something unique. Right? For example, I'll just give one example. What should we do? Right? How many of you know we don't like offerings here? We don't. In the sense that we don't publicly ask for offerings, or we don't mention offerings, we don't speak about it. That's the last thing in our mind. But it's very common in spiritual gathering people speak about it, right? Is that true? Mm -hmm. We don't. Why? I walk in the grace of God in the of penance. We have all the bills paid off completely. And we share with other people that need sharings. Since we started, we have never run back. At the beginning when we started, people mocked and said, you have to do a lot of fundraising to pay all the bills. I said, I ain't doing fundraising. I have no time for that. That's good. I have no time for fundraising. <laughs> I have no time for fundraising. I have no time. I'm not, I'm not against it. I have no time. I will walk in the grace of God. Amen. I will walk in the favor of God without even mentioning any need to anyone here. Most of you that give your life by the Holy Spirit, you give, and we are blessed. We are so blessed. So blessed. Those who give, you can see the account at the end of the year. You can open the book, you can see everything. We are blessed, we are surplus. We are so blessed. I have zero concern about bills for the ministry. Zero concern. Zero concerns. My concern, my concern is that you all walk in this truth. Amen. That is my heart, my burden. That you walk, that you walk in this truth. That if I can, if I can somehow help you with this, I'm a helper. You can call me a pastor. Thank you very much, but there's no need for that. <laughs> but look at me as a helper. I'm going to help you. Because why? In some sense, this is my bragging, I live this life. Amen. I cannot take you to a place where I don't, I don't, I don't live. Right. I cannot show you something that I don't, I don't know. Right. That would be a, a hypocrisy. Like, I cannot teach you something I don't experience. I don't like to be a hypocrite. I hate being a hypocrite. This is something, oh, I'm talking a big place first. This is something that's real. Because God is awesome. Like, this is, this was, this is something that's so real. Let's not read to the other shall we? God is able to make all grace upon toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have abundance for every good Word. Hallelujah. 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 That's the reality of the gospel. That's the reality of God. That's the reality of God. God is so awesome. For almost a year and a half, you have known me. You have not seen me come one Sunday with a head down. Have you? Discouraged. No, because thank God that I don't have to live that way. God is real. God is awesome. And if you get a perception, understanding of God, God, your grace is so real. I thank you, God, for your grace of God, Lord. Lord, your grace is not partial or limited. That's my view of grace. But your view of grace is complete. Right? Again, it's a typical example of grace favor shown to a woman and all of them. Okay? Because of favor, she stood out. All the people in our town. Noah stood out because of the grace of God. Same way, you will stand.
turned out, right? So grace from God's point of view is 100% given to you and to be experienced every day. It's the experience every day because of Christ. Now we have it so easy because of Christ. You don't need to go through emotional turmoil. You don't need to go through defeat in life. You are who you are by the grace of God. Hallelujah. You are who you are by the grace of God. And just believe it. I am who I am by the, by the grace of God. Right. And I want to experience the grace of God more and more that I, as a child of God, can really be the child of God. But I am what I am. But I am, as you know, is another name for God. What did God tell Moses? Tell Moses, I am sent you. Right? I am what I am. What does it mean? When you're walking by the grace of God, you're walking in your calling. You're walking in your authority. As you heard recently today, and Peter and, and who else shared recently? That Jesus said, I am He. And they fell down and they came to arrest too. Right? By the grace of God, that speaks my authority, I am what I am. That means grace of God makes you shine the son of God of God. Grace of God makes you to shine among other people in every moment, son of God of God. Hallelujah. And God's grace is abundance. God's grace is awesome. Hallelujah. He will make you look awesome for other people. And you people wonder, how are you living? How are you living your life? You say, I am by, what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I am what I am by the grace of God. If I'm able to show joy in the midst of sorrow, it's by the grace of God. Like if I'm able to pay all the bills, even the financial limited, it's by the grace of God. Hallelujah. If I'm able to get healed, it's by the grace of God. If I'm able to walk in deliverance, it's by the grace of God. If I'm, if I'm able to enjoy the word of God, it's by the grace of God. If I'm able to pray in tongues, it's by the grace of God. If I'm able to help someone else to be, to be delivered, to be saved, it's by the grace of God. Hallelujah. If I'm able to pray for someone, it's by the grace of God. And God's grace is in full abundance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Paul really understood this. He said, you know, I'm the least of all least. You know, I don't consider you a Christian. I'm not worthy to be an apostle. But, I understand God's favor. I, I killed Christians. I, I tormented them. I put them in jail. I'm not even worthy to be an apostle. I'm not. I'm the least of the least. But, you know what? Guys, I think I, I, I understand God's favor. Yeah. God favors on me. I'm, I'm worthy. I'm the least of the least. But I am who I am. Amen. By the grace of God. Hey. Hallelujah. You are who you are by the grace of God. And keep remembering it, keep saying it, and you walk in 100% grace of God. Amen. Don't be subtle to the experience grace of God in every aspect of life. You want to get up and say, you know what? I had the struggles, but I applied the grace of God. I spoke the grace of God. I, I spoke God's favor over this, and boom, I see God's favor coming to pass. I struggled this through my life like this, but I, I refuse to struggle. You should refuse to struggle in life. You should say, no, I will not struggle. You know what, when it comes to struggle, draw a red line. That's a good thing. I will not struggle. I'm done. Because if I'm living in struggle, uh, I'm, if I'm living in struggle, I'm on page soon, where am I? Then I'm not living this. If I'm living in struggle, that's, I'm not, that's not this. Please draw a red line to your struggles. Is that a good thing? Who drew a red line and bombed, is it? Um, Trump? And bombed uh, Syria? A chemical weapon use? Obama drew a red line, right? If you use a chemical weapon, it will shoot you down. You know, Obama drew Okay, you're not into politics, but. Uh, <laughs> some person draw a red line and they say, well, maybe you don't understand. No! Draw a red line to problems. You know what? You will not exceed. You will not get bigger. I'm done with you. 
I am by the grace of God, and I will apply to God's favor in this aspect. Right? If the young man could apply favor to every aspect of Rahab, and God's favor applied to Noah every aspect of his life, God is the same God. Amen. How much more now that we have Christ in us? Let's just praise God, shall we? Let's lift up our hands to God in closing. Let's just praise God because this is true. That's God's view of favor. That's God's view of favor. Right? That's God. Let's just praise God. Let's lift up our hands. Let's just shout out to God. God, I thank you, God, Lord. Because this promise is real. God, this promise is real. But God, right? If you don't believe in this, don't believe in any part of the Bible. This is a part of God. But let's just stand, shall we? In closing, this is true of God, Lord. I believe in you, God, Lord. I believe in this, of God, Lord. We are a God of all this. Let's lift up our hands to God, our Father. And just bless God. Let's praise God. God, thank you for the promise of God, Lord. If you read it out loud, just read it out loud. God, your grace is able to make all this abound towards me. That I, always having all sufficiency in all things, will abound in every, and abundance in every good works. Hallelujah. God is able to make all this abound toward me. Hallelujah. That me, I, always having all sufficiency in all things, we're abundant for every good work, God. Your grace is 100 personal, God, Lord. I bless you, God. Let's lift up our hands. Let's bless God. Because that is a God of all grace. From God's point of view, it's 100 percent. It's 100 percent. It's complete. Not just in theory, not just in doctrine, but in practice, in real life, in reality. Oh God, Lord, I bless you, God. Let's just shout out to God, shall we? Let's just lift up our voice. Just bless God. God, I thank you, God. Let's just shout out to God. 